Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Darian and today we're going to be talking about my favorite books from 2023. So first of all, I must address <laughs> the lighting in this video is not going to be very good. I have done the best with what I have, but I realized the other day that I'm getting my wisdom teeth out in a few days and I had planned to film this video and a few other videos this weekend just like completely forgetting that I'm getting my wisdom teeth out and then I realized oh I'm not gonna be able to do that because my face is gonna be huge and I'll probably be in a bit of pain so I'm doing it today this is when I had time I'm so sorry about this lighting but I did everything I could I hope it's okay. Also, I feel like I need to apologize for this video being late, even though it's not even that late. I feel like every year people post these videos earlier and earlier, and first of all, I could never film this video before the year ends because in my brain I'm like, what if I find a book that makes this list? I mean, I didn't this year, but it could happen, so I have to wait until at least January 1st, but of course, like, with the new year and then my semester starts and there's other end-of-year videos I want to do, it always ends up being a little late, even though in my brain it's not that late. But anyway, so apologies <laughs> if this is late, but I don't think it's late. But anyways, apparently it's late for some people. 2023, I talked about this a little bit in my stats from 2023 video. I did not have the greatest reading year. My goal was to read 100 books and I only read 81. And I know that's still a good achievement, but I really, really wanted to read 100 books last year. So that is my goal this year. And in terms of the quality of the books I read, I did not really find very many like all time new favorite books. There are a few books that are in this list that I would probably consider like all time favorite books. But if you look at like my stats, I can't remember how many five stars I gave out last year, but it was a lot. It was like in the 20s or 30s. But I think that's because I wasn't finding these like all time favorite books. So I felt like I had to give more five stars. But anyways, all the books in this video, well, some of the honorable mentions are 4.5 stars, but all the books in my top 10 are five stars. And if they're not all time favorites, I would consider them like definitely new favorite books if that makes sense. Um, but before we get into my top 10, as always, let's look at the honorable mentions for 2023. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping and the vision that was planted in my brain still remains within the sound of silence in restless dreams I walked alone Narrow streets of cobblestone Neath the halo of a street lamp I turned my collar to the cold and damp when my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light that split the night and touched the sound of silence. Thank you so much, Darian from the future for that moving tribute and yeah, so without further ado, let's just get into the top 10 books of 2023. So another thing I want to mention before I get into this list is that since it was not the best reading year, I feel like my memory of some of these books just like is not there. I remember how I felt reading them. I just don't remember the plot super well. So that's what I'm going to focus on in this video is more on how the books made me feel and less on the plot of the books. So just letting you guys know, but in the number 10 spot is If I Have to Be Haunted by Miranda's Son. This book, it definitely crept up on me. I had never heard of this book until I attended 
one of HarperCollins Canada's influencer events. I am part of their influencer programs and every quarter they have an event where they talk about books coming out in the next season. This was one of them. I had never heard of it but it sounded really interesting so I requested an ARC and I got it and I I just really really love this book. Like is it a five star worthy book? I don't know but it is five stars in my heart that's for sure. It is basically about this teenage girl who can see ghosts and she has a rival at school and they do not get along at all but then this guy, I don't remember their names, but <laughs> this guy, I think his name is Zachary actually, but then this guy dies and she is the only one who can see his ghost and they have one week to figure out how to revive him or else he will be dead forever. And through their journey of working together, they realize they like each other, of course, and I just thought this was just so good. <laughs> I loved reading about this relationship. I, I don't know, it just made me, like, this is one of the books that made me the happiest to read this year. I just had a huge smile on my face the whole time I was reading it. And it does have some harder topics because it does discuss death, but I just thought it was just a really, really fun YA book. Um, I guess you would consider this fantasy or paranormal, but this, like, this book is one of the reasons why I still love reading YA, because I love reading about the feelings that I used to feel when I was a teenager and sometimes still do feel just like that giddiness you feel when you start to like someone and then add in like this life or death situation I just find it made the plot so interesting and I, I just really really liked this book and I don't know anyone else who has read this so I highly recommend this book. It was definitely a very atmospheric read because it takes place the week leading up to Halloween. I would definitely recommend saving this for October because I read it like the week leading up to Halloween also and it was just perfect. The vibes were immaculate and I just love this book and I just want everyone else to read it too. In the number nine spot is Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Malores. This is a book that I've been wanting to read for so long based Basically since it came out and it was one of those books that I just had a feeling I would love and then I finally took it out from the library this summer and read it and I knew it. I loved it. You are following these two characters, Cleo and Frank, and uh, they get married partly because they meet and feel very attached to each other right away and partly because I think it's Cleo who is from the UK and she needs to get married or else she'll have to go back to England. So they get married partly for like lustful reasons and partly just to you know, for convenience. And they have a very dysfunctional relationship. They have a very toxic relationship. But just reading about these characters, I thought the writing in this book was so good. And I just want to read everything Coco Malora's writes. I also read this at the perfect time. I am so glad I waited to read this book because there were parts of this book that I didn't know I needed to read until the moment I read them, you know what I mean? And there was a character in this book that was like dealing with something that I was dealing with at the exact same time that I read this book and I, I couldn't believe it basically. So this book just meant a lot to me. I, I loved the writing, I loved the characters even though they were super messy. I just loved the exploration of their relationship and what you do for the people you love and the people in your life that you care about and the lengths you will go to to try to make each other happy and I just really really love this book. In the number eight spot I am so excited to talk about this book because I don't know if I've ever talked about it in a video I can't remember. Maybe in my mid-year book tag. But anyways, number eight spot is Just Last Night by Vary McFarlane. Now you look at the cover of this book and it looks like just your typical like romance book. It is like a cartoon cover, you know, very similar to a lot of other romance books that are out there. But I urge you <laughs> to look into trigger warnings for this book and read the synopsis because this is actually a very heavy book. It is a romance, but I would still caution you before going into this book. It is very heavy at times. It's basically about these four friends who have been friends since college, I think, and the main character in the book is in love with one of the guys in this friendship group. And so this friendship group is two girls and two guys, and one night the other girl in the friendship group dies in a car accident, and it is a lot about them dealing with their grief and about losing someone so suddenly and how you just have to go on with your life after something like that and about the trauma of losing someone so suddenly and so it's about all of that and then <laughs> And then there's another element added to the book which I don't really want to say because I didn't know about this going into the book and it made the book even more interesting to me but basically our main character finds out about a secret that 
her friend had been keeping and she is very upset to find out this secret and she is dealing with all these complicated feelings because she can't confront her friend because her friend is no longer with us. And so there's so many complicated emotions in this book. I thought Vari McFarlane just dealt with these emotions and um, with these complicated issues so well. Like I was reading this book and I just like, I don't know what I would have done in the situation. I mean, on top of dealing with grief like this, you also have to deal with finding out something like this. <sighs> just thinking about it. <laughs> I feel overwhelmed but it was so good and it was the first book I read from this author and I really just want to read more from her because oh god the writing in this book I thought was just so good and also I mean I did say this was a romance the romance in this book was very unexpected it was not between the characters that I thought it would be between and I thought it was just so so well written Oh my god, it also like, it definitely made me feel very seen as someone who has dealt with similar grief that these characters deal with and so I just found it a very healing experience honestly and I listened to this as an audiobook. I would definitely love to get a physical copy and reread this and underline things and just be able to like savor this book because I loved it so much. So I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. This is another book that I don't hear anyone else talking about and it was just so, 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 so good. I love it. <laughs> so in the number seven spot, I finally have a physical copy of one of these books, but that is The Long Game by Elena Armas. Now, would you believe me if I said I liked this even more than The Spanish Love Deception? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I feel like that's an unpopular opinion, but it's true. I'm speaking with truth. But this is um, the same author as The Spanish Love Deception, obviously, which was like a book talk sensation. And I do really like that book, but this book just, just, just really, really did something for me. It is following, oh, now I can look at their names, Adeline and Cameron, of course. And Adeline works for this soccer team that plays in the MLS, which is like the North American League of Soccer. And her dad is the owner of the team, I believe. And a video of her goes viral after after she's seen like attacking the mascot of the team that she works for and not like attacking like in a super violent way just kind of like she's just seen like having a tantrum basically and this video goes viral and so obviously this does not look great on their team so her dad says I'm gonna send you to I think it's North Carolina yeah I'm gonna send you to North Carolina you're gonna help this um, like small team in this small town and kind of get your act together and make the team look good again and then you can come back and she's like okay whatever so she goes to North Carolina and it turns out this team that she's supposed to work for is actually a group of like seven-year-old seven-year-old girls and the coach of the team is actually a retired goalkeeper who played in the Premier League in the UK. If you know soccer slash football you know what I'm talking about. Thankfully I know more about this stuff because of my boyfriend but yes. <laughs> so he is a retired goalkeeper but a lot of people in the town don't know who he is. They don't recognize him but she recognizes him right away but she has to keep the fact that she knows his identity a secret and so they work together on this team. He is very very grumpy. She's also kind of grumpy but he's more grumpy and there is um, a goat involved which we love and they just kind of get to know each other and it is kind of like an annoyance to love situation. I would not say it's hate to love but they definitely don't love each other at the beginning but then they you know they start to fall in love as these things go and I just I just <laughs> I love Elena Armas' books because they're just a silly goofy time and in this book I was rooting for this relationship so hard and she is so good at writing slow burn romances like they don't have their first kiss until well into the book <laughs> and I remember reading this and like I could not stop reading because I needed to get to when they had their first kiss and it took forever but it, the wait was worth it and I just loved it I had a great time with this book and I loved the heart that was in it and I loved Cameron I loved him even more than Aaron Blackford okay Cameron can get it <laughs> I loved them so much and I love this book. I just had such a great time reading it. Okay, next for number six was a book that was definitely unexpected for me because when I finished the book, I think I gave it four stars, maybe 4.5 stars, but the more I thought about it after I finished it, the more I just loved it and then I gave it a five stars and then the more I thought about it, I was like, this has to be in my top 10 of the year and that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, the second book in this list to have Frankenstein in the title. But obviously this is a classic about 
uh, Victor Frankenstein who builds this monster and this monster just kind of deals with being alive and what that means and Victor Frankenstein also has a lot of anxiety and feels a lot of loneliness and this is one of those books that just did something to me as I was reading it because did I always understand what was going on? No. Were some parts a little too long in my opinion? Yeah, but the overall themes of this book just really got to me. The themes of like what you will do just to feel the love of another person. I could, I feel like when I was done this book I was like I need to write an essay or something. Like I loved this book so much and again I listened to the audiobook which by the way the audible version of the audiobook has Dan Stevens as the narrator and that's what I listened to. He is, he gave the performance of his life. <laughs> I love Dan Stevens and I loved listening to him narrate this audiobook and I actually ordered myself a physical copy so that I can reread it and like really analyze the text. That's what I really want to do because I read this also in October and and I thought it was the perfect time to read this book and so once I get my physical copy I might reread it next October or I guess this coming October and reread it physically and just really like analyze and just throw myself into the text even more because I just loved I loved it. I felt like weirdly seen in this book and I loved how the characters were so complex and like Mary Shelley girl <laughs> A genius, honestly. She was a genius, clearly, and there's a reason this book is a classic and the reason this was basically the first science fiction book ever written. I mean, it was just so, so good. It might be my new favorite classic. I don't know. I don't know. But I think it might be, and I'm just so, so excited to reread this one. The lighting is... I think it's hanging on. It's doing okay. We, we got some lens flares, but... Like, this just makes me... Oh, that's not great. This just makes me look orange and you guys can't tell me what looks better. I think we might just deal with this lens flare, I don't know, but anyways. So number five is gonna be no surprise to anyone if you watched any of my videos this year, but that is If It Makes You Happy by Claire Kahn. I love, I love this book. I love this book so much. I read it back in April and it was just, I love Claire Kahn. I love her books. I've only read two but I gave both of them five stars. I just think her writing is so great and again she makes me feel so seen. This book is about this girl. Her name is Winnie. I do remember that and there are a lot of plot points in this book. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Basically Winnie is in a queer platonic relationship with her friend. I think her name is Kara. They never name it as a queer platonic relationship but um, I think the way they describe it that's how I interpreted it and I've never read a book. I've never read a fiction book that included a queer platonic relationship so that was very interesting to read about and Winnie also has this crush on this boy at school and it is kind of about how that affects her relationship with Kara and then there is another layer to this book because Winnie is fat and um, her grandmother really wants her to lose weight and Winnie is very proud of her body she has no issues with her body but the people around her seem to have issues with it and the, just the discussions of fat phobia in this book I'm so sorry this lighting <laughs> I'm trying to be serious and the lighting is making it unserious this is not a J.J. Abrams movie. But yes, the discussion of fat phobia in this book just really meant a lot to me. And just how Winnie was so proud to be herself and she felt very mature. I think she was 18 in the book. She felt very mature but it also felt like she was an 18 year old. Like it didn't feel like I was reading in the head of like a 30 year old in a 18 year old's body, you know, like some YA books are. It just felt very real to me. There's also an aspect of cooking in this book. She's trying to enter her brother, I think, into like this cooking competition. So there's a lot going on in this book, but I just really, really enjoyed it. And I love Claire Kahn's writing and I never see anybody talk about this book. I don't know a single person <laughs> who has read this book. So please, if you take any recommendation from this video, honestly, I would say read this book because I feel like most of the other books, every book that I mention, like in the 4 through 2 1 spots, are very popular books. So if you take any recommendation from this video, just please check out if it makes you happy because it made me happy. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, and yes, I just loved it. I loved it so much. <laughs> in the number four spot is a book that I read way back in January of last year. So honestly, my memory is probably the worst for this book, but I remember how much I loved it. And that was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This was on a lot of people's lists last year, but I got to it a bit late. And so I read it when there was still a lot of hype about this book, but then I had to wait a year to talk about it in my favorites. But I think everyone knows what this book is about. It's about these two 
video game designers who meet when they're very young and they work together to make video games and they have a very complicated relationship because throughout their life there are different points where one of them is in love with the other one but the other one doesn't reciprocate then their feelings kind of switch then one of them is in a relationship with one of their friends it's a very interesting relationship between the two of them and I definitely would not call this a romance I think it even says like in the synopsis that this is not a romance or something yeah at the at the end it says yes it is a love story but it is not one you have read before so like don't go into this being like oh my god they're gonna get together at the end and there's gonna be this big moment like it's definitely not a romance it's very much like lit fic you're just following them throughout their life and throughout their career and the ups and downs of their career and the struggles that they go through working together and in their own personal lives and i just the writing in this is so good it reminded me a lot of daisy jones and the six not in that this is not told in like an interview style but the way it kind of like jumped back and forth in time the way it goes through their career the way it talks about fame i just really really loved it i love stories like this where it just follows characters through a very large portion of their life and it just <laughs> I mean there's not much I can say that won't spoil anything but it definitely made me cry at certain parts and this was a book that I just got sucked into. I loved reading the story, I loved learning about the video games that they were making and like I like video games but I don't know anything about like coding or anything like that but I was eating this up. I was like oh my god how are they gonna code this? Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I was just really really into it and so but everyone everyone knows this book so but I really liked it, obviously. It's one of my favorite books of the year. <laughs> Next, in the number three spot, I am so excited to talk about this book. Now, there is going to be a video coming, hopefully soon. I keep saying that, but it's gonna come, I promise. But there is a video coming where I'm gonna go very in depth, like very spoilery about this book. Just you wait, okay? So I'll tell you how much I love it, but just wait for that video. But the number three spot, which I could never have seen this coming was The Love Hypothesis <laughs> by Ali Hazelwood. Now, everyone read this, like, what? It came out three years ago, I think, in 2021. Everyone read this back then. It was on everyone's favorite list back then. And now Ali Hazelwood has now released her fourth book and she's releasing her fifth book pretty soon. So everyone has kind of like moved on from this. I, <laughs> everyone moved on, but I stayed there. <laughs> I, I cannot even express <laughs> how much I loved this book. I think my feelings about this book were amplified because I read this right after one of my worst books of the year and I was kind of in that mood where I was like do I even like reading anymore and then I picked this up and I was like oh <laughs> oh I really really do. So this is I mean everyone knows what this is about but I'll give you <laughs> a quick synopsis. It's about this girl named Olive and she is trying to prove to her friend that she has moved on from this guy that she was seeing for like a few weeks because her friend really likes him but doesn't want to like break girl code and make a move on him because she's worried about like hurting all of his feelings and all of his like no like I swear it's fine I have no feelings for him you're totally fine but her friend still won't do it so all of his like okay actually I'm dating someone new now and then she basically kisses the first guy that she sees which happens to be a professor at the university that she works at not her professor just a professor okay then they start this fake dating arrangement because she is trying to prove to her friend that she's moved on and he is trying to prove that he's not going to move on from this university anytime soon so that they will give him funds for his next like research project or something to be honest i don't really understand <laughs> but that's their arrangement and it is about their romance and when i tell you <laughs> adam carlson is there any other man? He's the only man to ever exist. Oh, I love him. <laughs> the grumpiest boy to ever grump. <laughs> he was amazing. The pining in this book was next level. I loved it so much. I cannot even tell you. I think about this book. I read this, I think in November. I think I read it in November. I have not stopped thinking about this book since I read it. I just, every time I look at it, I just want to reread it. I have definitely like picked it up and reread certain passages, certain scenes. Oh my god, it is so, so good. But it also like, I wouldn't say it's a light fluffy romance because it does deal with heavier topics like sexual harassment and like sexism, especially within academia and in the STEM fields. And I believe Ali Hazelwood is also 
um, like a scientist of some sort and so you could tell she's writing she knows what she's talking about I really appreciated like these deeper topics within this like silly fun romance the banter between these characters it was so good it made me laugh it made me want to scream <laughs> maybe there was some screaming at 2 a.m. I don't know but I, I love this so much I loved it so 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 much oh my god just looking at it i'm like what if i just reread it right now what if i just reread it right now hmm? Hmm? i don't know so but love <laughs> i mean everyone read it two years ago so you're all like okay whatever darian but if you haven't read this yet it is so worth the hype like i really did not think i would love it as much as i did but it is so good it is so good. It is so good. It is so good. <laughs> okay, so we are now at my top two books of the year. And again, these will probably not come to any surprise to anybody because they are both YA fantasies. And we all know YA fantasy is my favorite genre to read. But in the number two spot is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. Listen, listen, guys. <laughs> I really think Ava Reed just wrote this book specifically for me. I think she did that for me. She said, I'm going to write this. I'm gonna write this for Darian because I loved it. I love it so much. I love the writing. I love the themes. I love the characters. I will say in these top three books, the like male love interests in these books, men. Three men. They're the only three men. <laughs> I'm just saying. You're following this girl named Effie who is studying at the archaeolo archaeological? Archaeological? Archaeolo archaeology? the archaeology college and what she really wants is to be studying at the literature college but they don't allow women so to her this is like the next best thing but you know archaeology is not her passion literature is and she's obsessed with this book by this famous author and the author died I think like a few months ago and then she finds out there is a position open to like redesign the estate that the this author lived in and so she applies and she gets the job and so she goes to this estate and it is a very like gothic atmosphere and um, when she gets there she sees another student from the literature college named Preston and they don't get off on the right foot she doesn't like him mostly just based on like preconceived notions of him and then of course they start to work together and then they fall in love <laughs> as we all know. But there is so much going on in this story. There's a lot of discussion on sexual assault, on sexism, yet again, um, in academia. Are we sensing a theme? Also Effie. So this book that she loves is about the fairy king and Effie is convinced that she keeps seeing the fairy king everywhere and she's the only one who is seeing these visions and so she's trying to figure out what's going on. Part of her believes that she's just crazy but part of her really believes in what she's seeing and that she can see the fairy king so there's kind of that mystery going on. There's a lot of mysteries brought up by this author's house about if he actually is the one who wrote this book or maybe if someone else wrote it and he stole it. I mean there's just so much going on in this book but it's so masterfully written and it balances all the different plot points so well. I just loved it so much. It's also one of those books where like the first half you're just kind of like I don't know if I completely understand what's going on but by the end of the book everything just like slips into place. Everything makes sense. All the questions that you had are answered by the end of the book and you can tell that this was plotted so well that Ava Reed planned this book so well because there was no stone unturned. It was so so good. So well done. I loved Ava Reed's writing and I want to read all of their books now. <sighs> I love this book and I love Effie, one of my new favorite characters of all time. I love Preston. He's just a little cinnamon roll boy and he's so sweet. <laughs> I love him so much and I just really really love this book. I love the atmosphere. I loved everything. The writing, the plot, the characters. I loved it all. So I mean again I feel like everyone's read this book. <laughs> if you haven't read this book yet definitely highly recommend. It's one of my favorites of the year obviously. And then finally my favorite book of the year. I feel like this is anticlimactic because I feel like this is so many people's <laughs> favorite book of the year or it's definitely in their favorites list. So you've probably heard so many booktubers talk about this book already but I'll just talk about it for a little bit more. That is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Honestly before I read this book I was like because I read this in I think it was September. At that point I hadn't found a book that like really felt like it was gonna be my favorite book of the year yet and so I was thinking like oh I guess it'll be like something that I really liked but not necessarily like a new all-time fave. And then 
this little missy came around. We all know, I think everyone knows <laughs> what this book is about, but you're following Iris and Roman who are both journalists. They work at the same newspaper and they are rivals at work, but they don't realize that the typewriters that they have are kind of like magically linked to each other. And so they can write letters to each other and that's what they're doing. They start corresponding, but Iris doesn't know that it's Roman she's writing to, but Roman does know that it's Iris. And so Iris is starting to feel like she is having feelings for this person that she's writing to. And then in real life, she just finds Roman so annoying. He is her rival and he is just always like being annoying to her. This story also revolves around this war between the gods and the war starts to get worse. They both end up going to the front lines of the war to work as journalists um, to report on the front lines and they just get closer and it's just so such beautiful writing. This is some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read. I did recently read the sequel and the conclusion to this duology and I really loved it. Not as much as the first one. This book will always have such a special place in my heart and I definitely will be rereading it for years to come. I tabbed- I don't even know if you could see this because of the lighting, but I tabbed it up a bunch. I just- I really really love this book. The romance is so sweet. <laughs> and oh my god Roman is just this he's my Roman Empire nah I get it he's so sweet the romance is just so delightful and I love all the characters in this book I felt like I got to know all these characters even the side characters so well and I found reading about the war so interesting about these gods that were fighting and the backstory about like the myths and stuff I just loved everything about this book and the cliffhanger at the end like this book really just had me in a chokehold. This was one of the only books that I read this year that I felt like I could not put down. Like I would say the top three books of my favorite books list, like those were some of the only books I read this year that I just like, if I couldn't read then I would be thinking about reading. And that didn't happen a lot for me this year, but it definitely happened with this book. Like if I was in class or something I'd be thinking about this book and what was happening to the characters and how long until I could pick this book up again. And so this is definitely my favorite book that I read in 2023, but it's like everyone else's favorite book. So no one is surprised, but yes, love it, love it so much, love them, love their work love it. <sighs> okay, I feel like I've been talking for so long, but <laughs> those are my favorite books of 2023. Let me know what your favorite books from last year were. Do we share any of the same ones on our list or are any of these your worst books? I find that very interesting. I will be filming my worst books of the year video probably sometime soon. That one will come <laughs> at some point. I definitely have some popular books in that list. So stay tuned for that but I love filming this video because I love gushing about the books that I love and I can't wait to see what my favorite books of 2024 are. I hope it is a better reading year but anyways those are my favorite books. If you watch till the end leave um if you watch till the end leave any flower emoji for Divine Rivals because there's flowers on the cover. But yes, my battery is dying, so it's time to go. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon with another video soon. Bye!